I'm Jean Nicodemus. I'd like to show you how to draw natural forms from observation. So I've chosen to draw a monk jack deer skull that is local to the area that I live in. And I'm going to start off by um, placing the drawing on the paper. So I'm going to roughly measure with my pencil uh, the angles so I can block in the basic shape of the skull. So I'm just going to look with my pencil and judge the angle of the skull and try and draw that on the paper by just using a rough structural guideline. So there we go. That's roughly where I want that angle to be. Uh, next angle, maybe take the top of the skull. There, that's more or less um, horizontal. I could take the, the slight change in angle from the um, nose of the skull. Perhaps the angle from the tips of the antlers. You can see that if you line a pencil up alongside that. There. Jawbone of the skull. You can also use the pencil to measure parts of the skull. So I'm going to measure the length of the antler compared to where it comes up to the nasal cavity of the skull. So that's the same as that. So um, I'm going to put in some more uh, structural lines. So um, let me just see. Am I going to do this to scale? I might. So. Okay. That comes to there. That comes to there, roughly. And that should be where the nasal skull is. So these are the ends of the antlers. That's where the nasal cavity of the skull is. So it's roughly, this is where it's going to go on the paper. So now I'm going to look for, um, I can do that, that one as well. Actually, if I line my pencil up um, vertically, I can see that the end of the far antler is in line with the jawbone at the bottom. So I'm just going to put that place in there so I know where that is. So it's really good to use your pencil to measure and compare distances if you're not used to doing it by eye. Yeah. Now I'm going to start drawing. Um, I think I'll start from uh, the far antler and I can start drawing uh, the negative shape, the shape that space around the um, the skull looking for the shape. Notice how often I flick my eyes up and down as I'm looking at what I'm drawing. Some students timed it and it could have been about 30 30 um, times a minute or more, or more. The thing is, is that when you're drawing, you can't actually 
see the object that you're drawing and the paper at the same time. So the closer you can put the paper to the object that you're drawing, the more you'll be able to remember when you're actually drawing. Because when you're actually drawing, it's, all, it's entirely from memory. You're not actually looking at what you're drawing. So it's really important to keep looking and comparing every few seconds at what you're drawing. So now I'm drawing the space between the antlers, the skull as it dips down, looking for it. I'm imagining it, following the line as I'm drawing. <clears throat> going back to the other antler. Now I'm going to compare where this part of the antler, the um, where it meets the skull, changes colour and see how that lines up with the other one. So that lines up roughly that distance. So don't worry if you have to make a mistake because I'm drawing a pencil and you can rub it out and do it again. So that's not really a problem. So I'm now doing that. So hopefully I've got the shape of the space in between and and the starting point of the back of the skull. I'm also going to use the shadows to help me find some lines. So this line that I'm drawing now is a, a shadow along the top of the skull, a sort of ridge, natural ridge. And that's going to help me find the shape. So when you're drawing, you start from somewhere and it's like a jigsaw puzzle. Each piece matches and lines up with the other. So one, one part of the drawing slowly evolves into the next. Don't start drawing somewhere else. Everything has got to link up as you're drawing it. So that's the top part of the skull. Now I'm going to find another shape to draw so this is the where the antler actually meets the skull I like the skull because it looks a bit like a dragon and that lines up there now I'm drawing the eye socket I'm actually going to look while well, I'm drawing the eye socket I'm looking at the shape of this um, piece of bone here and that will start to give me the shape of the eye socket. So you're continuously measuring everything and comparing shapes and the more you do this the easier and more naturally you'll find you'll be doing it. I'm now going to, before I'm going to draw the, I'm not going to carry on drawing the bottom of the eye socket. I'm going to look for the shape within the eye socket so I can see something at the back there. And that will give me a sort of shape before I, I link up with the rest of it. And now there's this bit of shadow here, part of the jawbone is coming through, poking through, very delicate shape. So I'm still just blocking it in to get the idea of where everything goes. Now, it's an interesting shape.
you have to still sit, sit quite still because if you move your head around you'll find that the position of what you're looking at will change so you have to sit quite still and there's a light bridge coming along here and then looking for the distance of this part of the skull here and I love this tooth that curls round Now, as well as looking at each piece separately and how they join on to the next, like a jigsaw puzzle, you will have to look at the overview to see what it looks like as a whole as well. Now I'm going to look for there's a tiny space in between this tooth and the outer jawbone. These aren't exactly lining up, I have to rub out something. Oops. Hmm. This is where the thing's teeth are going to be. So I roughly I roughly placed it on the paper now. Not quite sure how it's taken me 13 minutes, 14 minutes to place that on the paper. Now it's probably still not quite how I want it to be. But I can rub that out and change that later. Now if you want to you can rub out some of the guidelines. I'm just going to change my rubber here. Hold on. Okay. Or you can just leave them because quite often people do leave in the guidelines. It doesn't really matter. I'm using an HB pencil. Make sure it's properly um, sharpened but not too um, sharp. I'm using an HB pencil. Make sure it's properly um, sharpened but not too um, sharp. Right, it doesn't look anything like a skull at the moment, so I'm now going to I'm now going to use um, a bit of weight of line. So where there's the most contrast between the light and the dark areas, I'm going to press more heavily to make it look a bit more 3D. So I'll start off where I started before, and I can see a stronger contrast between the paper 
and the, where the light's hitting. So I'm pressing a bit more heavily there. Where it becomes more muted and softer, merging, you have it uh, a lot lighter. So only pressing heavily where you can see the strongest contrast. Now I know the ends of the antlers are quite dark, but I, I'm not going to overdo that then. I'll leave that there. You can also use the rubber to lighten all your lines and then draw back into it and that works quite well to soften the guidelines that you first started off with and that sort of merges everything a little bit more softly. Now as, using, as well as using weight of line I'm now going to put in a bit of hatching as opposed to shading, which is where I'm going to, it's a bit like shading, but I'm going to um, just put the uh, pencil in a particular direction in lines and build that up slowly. Actually this pencil makes making it look a bit like shading, it doesn't matter. So where the shadow is, this um, sort of shading I'm doing this makes it look a little bit more expressive and energetic. I quite like that quality. Pressing a bit more heavily because it's strong contrast in line. I'm also going to use this edge of the rubber to rub back into the drawing and remove some of the pencil lines and just draw back into it with the rubber. actually quite difficult to choose something as complicated as a skull to start off with but the same principles of um, plotting your drawing on the paper you can actually apply that to anything. If you want to include a bit of shading around the skull, you can. I've chosen to put this skull on a piece of white paper so that 
it's um, not so contrasting with the darker table. So you may want to think about how you want to place your natural form and the objects around it so they're not competing with it and distracting from what you're looking at. taking me 21 minutes so far. As you can see with any drawing it does take a while for you to build up what you're doing. You also may find that the more you concentrate, the more you might exaggerate some of the things you're looking at. That's all right. So now you can see that it's starting to develop on the paper. I'll do something about the teeth. I'll just put them following along the edges. shadow I think on this skull. Quite often if it's on a flat table if you just do the shadow in a in one direction like this it gives the sense of a flat the flatness of the thing that it's sitting on. I use my rubber to merge that shadow in a little bit. I'm not going to smudge it with my finger because that looks really grubby and not very nice. So 
that's roughly, oops, I seem to have knocked that. That's roughly um, how you start a any kind of drawing, really. Blocking it out. In design, they call it crating, when you put in the uh, measuring lines. In the measuring lines for the, oops, for the um, blocking it out on the paper. And I'm using weight of line to suggest where the shadows are, as well as sort of suggestive shading. Shading that is a little bit expressive. You build the shading up gradually. You don't just go straight in there um, with the darkest tones. You build that up slowly. If I wanted to draw this really accurately um, and carefully, I'd have to do it a little bit more slowly and carefully. But this gives you the rough idea of um, how to start a drawing of a natural form, any kind of natural form, any kind of drawing that you want to copy in front of you.